Sir Handel and Peter Sam had hard work while Scarloe was away. The owner gave them buffers and even bought a diesel named Rusty, but Sir Handel grumbled continually. One day, Gordon saw him shunting and laughed. My controller makes me shunt, Sir Handel said sheepishly, and take trucks to the quarries too. I'm highly sprung and I suffer dreadfully. Our controllers don't understand our feelings, sympathized Gordon. Now, if you were ill, he winked, you couldn't go, could you? Good idea, said Sir Handel. I'll try it. I don't feel well, he groaned next morning. There wasn't time to examine him then, so some of his trucks were coupled behind Peter Sam's coaches, and Rusty promised to follow with the rest. Hee hee hee, sniggered Sir Handel, but no one noticed. They were all too busy. Peter Sam didn't mind the extra work. He left his coaches at the top station and trundled cheerfully through the woods. The trucks chattered behind him in an agitated way, but he paid no attention. It might have been better if he had. Slates come from quarries high up in the hills. They travel down in trucks on a steep railway called an incline. Empty trucks at the bottom are hitched to a rope. Loaded ones at the top are hitched to another. By their weight, loaded trucks run down the incline, pulling up the empty ones. There are strong brakes in the winding house at the top to prevent loaded trucks from running down too fast. The ropes are very strong too, but in spite of this, trucks sometimes play dangerous tricks. Peter Sam never bumped trucks unless they misbehaved. Sir Handel bumped them even if they were good, so they didn't like him and played tricks whenever they could. Peter Sam pushed the empty trucks to a siding where his firemen hitched them to the rope. Then, on another siding, he pulled back some loaded trucks. With these in front of him, he stood waiting. More loaded trucks stood at the top of the incline, ready to come down. They couldn't see Peter Sam. They thought he was Sir Handel and wanted to pay him out. They began to move. Faster, faster, they grumbled. They reached halfway, gathering speed. Scrag him, scrag him, they yelled. No, no, wailed the empty trucks. It's Peter Sam, it's Peter Sam. But it was no use. The loaded trucks were straining at the rope. They broke it with a crack. Hurrah, hurrah, they roared, hurtling down the hill. Peter Sam heard them. He shut his eyes. His driver and fireman crouched in his cab. The crash jerked him violently backwards. Ouch, he shivered. I didn't expect a cold bath. The water poured from a channel, smashed by flying slates. He was soaked from funnel to cap. Peep, peep, he spluttered, and was glad when he heard Rusty's answering, Toot! Bust my buffers, exclaimed Rusty. What a mess. Never mind, Peter Sam. We'll get you out. He soon pulled him away from the water and the trucks. Peter Sam felt battered. His funnel was cracked and his boiler dented but he was glad his driver and fireman were unhurt. He thanked Rusty and limped slowly home. Rusty stayed to help clear the wreckage. I'm sorry about your accident, Peter Sam, said Sir Handel. I always stand well back. Trucks don't like me, you see. Why didn't you warn me? I didn't think. You never do, said a stern voice. You can start now while you are doing Peter Sam's work as well as your own. That'll teach you to pretend you are ill. Sir Handel did start thinking. He thought about thin controllers, and he thought about Gordon. He wanted to give Gordon a piece of his mind.